uh, Kennedy says, who the hell is Diane Nash? And then we kind of go back, I don't want to tell the film so much, but we kind of go back and, and, and talk about the Nashville student movement and um, the fact that, that as the Freedom Rides are collapsing, the first part of the Freedom Rides are collapsing, um, the students in Nashville, that, that very same night that they hear that, that the Freedom Rides are over, uh, decide that they have to take up the Freedom Rides and, and that, that that's something that they have to do. Mm -hmm. And the next morning, they leave from Nashville on, on their way to, uh, to Alabama, to Birmingham, to continue the rides. Wow. Um, just an incredible, incredible story um, of bravery. And, and uh, you know, well, what well, well, Sigenthaler said, I spoke with her. Uh -huh. And I said, young lady, don't you realize folks are going to get killed? I choke up when I think of this. Because yes. Diana said with perfect detachment, I can't, I get choked up. <laughs> Your words. Mr. Siegenthaler, we've already written our wills. Wow. Wow. <laughs> with that, Diana? No. <laughs> no. I was in the right place at the right time in Nashville, Tennessee, during the 1960s. And the people that Ralph talked about a few minutes ago, who were brave enough to get on the buses after we had all seen on the news that the buses had been smoke bombed, burned, and the viciousness of the mobs that attacked the Freedom Riders, um, to have been a part of the group from Nashville who decided to, that the Freedom Ride must continue at that point, and to count many of them among my friends. Um, I am so honored and so blessed in this life. I want to say that uh, we forget, and that's why I ask you, to bring up uh, Jim Farmer, right? Is because uh, the movement and nonviolence as a method was what we had been searching for a long time before uh, there was the movement as we now know it. And, uh, and uh, Jim Farmer had started in Chicago. and. We had a successful movement in Chicago. That's what made nonviolence something that we could begin to believe could take the place of our lack of having a strategy. The issue for black America was a strategy. It wasn't an issue whether we were ready to fight. It wasn't whether we knew we needed it. It was the fact that we did not have a working strategy. And uh, that search for a strategy was what this was all about. And uh, uh, Jim Farmer proved it in Chicago, right downtown in the Loop. Uh, I was getting material from upstate down into Peoria, Illinois. I was one of a whole group, black and white together, students at uh, Bradley University, largely. And uh, we began a movement there and, uh, and stopped uh, segregation in all downtown, right? And the, uh, uh, so when, when this came up, well, almost nine years later, I'm in Nashville, mm -hmm. right? And, uh, and we begin a movement there because Jim, because uh, 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 we're able to, uh, uh, Martin calls a meeting of ministers across the, across the South and they come together to form SCLC and, uh, in our town, uh, Nashville. Yeah, Southern Christian Yeah, I, as for this crowd, I didn't think I understand. <laughs> <laughs> but, 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 but you never can tell. <laughs> <laughs> that, um, and so our minister in, uh, uh, in, in Nashville it was a pastor of First Baptist Church and was the intellectual minister and the finest preacher that we had. Now, uh, 
I, uh, I, you can tell I'm going back so far that every now and then a name slips me. Kelly Miller Smith. Kelly Miller Smith, right? Mm -hmm. Kelly Miller Smith is one of the smoothest preachers you ever heard, the best personality I ever remember, right? Uh, and uh, Kelly uh, started organizing, and, uh, and, we, and, and then uh, uh, that organized ministers started the national movement, right? I just want you to see this because these are the questions that never get asked mm. and it's so important, right, is uh, to see how movements start yes. uh, yes. and how a few people can make the difference and one good personality or one good consistent struggler, all right, can bring together whole groups of people, right, and uh, uh, then Jim Lawson comes to town and when Jim gets there, he reaches for students, uh, and, uh, and he could really organize them, right? But it was the teaching, and this is the thing that we coming out of Nashville so want you to understand, all right? Is that uh, because so many of our young people think you just go sit down, right? Or you suddenly have a march. And when the walls don't fall down, they think there's something wrong. Right? Uh, uh, and, and the real thing was, what was wrong, they was never taught what nonviolence is all about. All right? And they think that you simply, uh, you know, stand up and declare, and uh, they wonder why they have no more teeth. Uh, 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 the, the point being is, is that we must see that we are preparing the whole world. All right? And that we've had uh, an Asian world understand nonviolence. We've now had the Western world to understand nonviolence. As a freedom writer, as somebody that has lived for 50 years with that experience as a, as a primary uh, part of my life, as the, the, uh, the thing that, uh, that moved me in all kinds of directions. Because when you have faced death, when you have faced beating, I didn't get beaten, but you faced I faced the possibility of it. And when you have been in jail, and when you have suffered in those ways, and we didn't suffer as much as other people did, but you are not afraid of anything. When uh, I first heard that they were leaving Washington, I remember it was about one o'clock at night. I was coming from Warren Coast to LACC studio. And uh, I said, you know, I should have been on that bus. And uh, uh, I hadn't been in L.A. too long. And maybe a few days later, or a week later, something like that, when I heard that they had been beaten up in Anderson, and I said, you know, I really should have been on that bus. <laughs> and um, I started trying to locate an organization to join. And uh, uh, I located a core. Uh, they were right down the street from L.A. City College. And um, at first they didn't want to let me go because I was only 20. I told them I was going if I had to just follow them. <laughs> and uh, I had uh, saved a little money, probably saved more now then than I have now. <laughs> but, uh, but I was going to take my own money and go. But I was going. You know, it was, you wasn't going to keep me out of it. I went, and it's the best experience I've ever had in my life. Yes. All the time that I was growing up, whenever you saw a movie on TV or in the, th or in the theater, whenever they showed a jail scene, the prisoners would be singing or moaning. And I used to wonder why. But I found out when, you, when you're in that situation, sometimes all you can do to verify yourself mm -hmm. is to let your voice come out mm -hmm. because they're doing everything they can to kill your spirit mm -hmm. and that's why we sang and some days we didn't we didn't need a director in front of us to tell us when to begin so we just we just start down at one end like Joan was down at one end I was down at the other and we just started it just starts to come out of you and you begin with a moan, and then works its way into a song. And everyone else joins in, and pretty soon they're telling you to shut up. <laughs>